In the first video for improper integration, we talked about how improper integration was going to be looking at integration where somehow infinities managed to sneak in. Well, here's an example. I don't see an infinity in sight. Got a one, we got a five, we have this stuff over here. And so why don't I just try to find an antiderivative, plug in five, and subtract off the antiderivative value of one. That would be the fundamental theorem of calculus. Now that's a reasonable strategy, but it turns out that it has a, a massive problem in this case. And I'm going to try to illustrate what the problem is, why we cannot just say this is the antiderivative of 5 minus the antiderivative at 1. Why I'm claiming that infinity is going to be sneaking into this problem. So the first thing I want to note is that just a little bit of algebra here. I always like to clean up denominators when I can, all right? And in this particular case, it looks like x minus 3 squared dx. Now perhaps in this form, it makes the error just a little bit more prominent. The issue is this x minus 3 on the bottom, because remember, we, we need to be very conscious about division by zero issues. So what I'm sort of very briefly thinking about is that x equal to 3 is a problem. And indeed, if I were just to do sort of a, a back of the envelope sketch of this, well, it's always some positive number, but at x equal to 3, it looks like this vertical asymptote. That's sort of what the graph of this function looks like. So if I'm trying to figure out uh, what this is going to be between 1 and 5, but at 3 here I have this vertical asymptote, well, this spike to infinity, the area under that curve, it, it's going off to infinity. It starts having infinite heights. So much like we saw in the example where I had sort of infinite widths, and so I was taking the limit as t went to infinity, when I took an integral from 0 to infinity, say, and we sort of said, well, yes, it's going to infinity, so it has sort of infinite width, but maybe very, very little height. This is an example where it has infinite height, but it has these heights for only very small widths. And by infinite height, I mean sort of in a, in a limiting sense. It, it's going towards infinity. It's never infinity for a specific value. It's undefined at x equal to 3. So we're in a similar situation, and we need to try to resolve it. One of the things that we can do is that we've, we've got a left side of this vertical asymptote. We have a right side of this vertical asymptote. So let's try to break it up. So I'm going to say this is actually two different integrals. This is the integral from 1 up to 3 of 10 over x minus 3 squared, as well as the integral from 3 up to 5 of 10 over x minus 3 squared dx. All right, so I have this, I've broken it up as the sum of these two things. But, but even still I'm not happy, because I can't do either the left or the right of these by just evaluating it. I can't just plug in 3 because that would be a, a something divided by zero. It, the fundamental theorem of calculus doesn't work here. And note that the fundamental theorem of calculus has restriction on that. We're not saying that the fundamental theorem of calculus is true for every function. It has to be nice. It has to be constrained. In particular, these discontinuities break the fundamental theorem of calculus. It doesn't work. It doesn't apply in these situations when we've got these discontinuities. Okay, so let's try to figure out how we're going to be able to deal with situations like this. In general, if I have some function which is continuous everywhere else, so it's well behaved everywhere else, but it's discontinuous at an endpoint, in particular in the way I've set it up, the endpoint B. Well, I cannot just apply the fundamental theorem of calculus, but I can, I can replace this B that we have up here by a limiting process. I can get as arbitrarily close to B from the left, t goes to b from the left, that's what the minus sign denotes, and then as long as the integral from a to t of f of x dx, as long as that thing exists for every t, which it will if we assume it's continuous everywhere else, then I can say that this thing is just going to converge if this limit converges, and diverge if this limit is going to diverge. And likewise, we can do the exact same thing on the other side. If it was a discontinuity at the a, we would take the limit as t went to a from the right of t up to b, something like that. So we can deal with this much as we had, whether it's on the top or the bottom, it doesn't particularly matter. All right, so now we have a strategy. We're going to, retra we're going to replace these discontinuous points by limiting processes. 
So I've copied and pasted down the work we've done before, and I'm actually just going to analyze just the first of these for now. I'm going to try to see what I can do with just that first term. Well, we've got a 1 to 3. 3 is a discontinuity, and so I'm going to say that this is equal to the limit as t goes to 3 from the left. It's from the left because I'm going from 1 up to 3, so to the left of 3, of the integral from 1 up to t of 10 over the x minus 3 squared dx. Now, I know how to do this, this integral that we have on the right here. This is a relatively straightforward integral. I'm going to set u equals to x minus 3. And the t out the front is going to come along for the ride. So t goes to 3 from the left. And then I'm going to have a 10. I'm going to have a minus sign. And I'm going to have an x minus 3 to the power of minus 1 evaluated between 1 and t. So that's me doing my u substitution in my head and verifying that I get this particular answer. All right, plugging in the values of t, I'm going to keep the limit here. I'm not dealing with that step right now. It's going to be the next one. So what am I going to do? I'm going to say that this is minus 10 times t minus 3 to the power of minus 1. And then I'm going to be subtracting off a minus 10. So two minuses become a plus. So 10 and then 1 minus 2, 1 minus 3 rather is minus 2 to the power of minus 1. All right. So now I've got some function of t. This is a limit as t goes to 3 from the left of some function of t. The, the, the right-hand expression, this 10 minus 2 to the minus 1, it's just some number. It doesn't matter. But... The important part is the first of the two terms, this t minus 3 to the power of minus 1. Well, if I'm going to take a value 3 from the left, this is going to be a little bit less than 3. This is looking like a 1 divided by 0, but from the left is going to be a minus sign. So the point is, it becomes a positive infinity. The two minuses are the one that we transparently see. The other one comes from the fact that t minus 3, all of our t values are a little bit less than 3, so those are negative, but they're negative going close to 0. It's a 1 over 0 and it becomes an infinity. So what's our final answer here? Well, if the first sum here is going to diverge to infinity, it doesn't matter what the second sum does. It turns out we could do the same process if we wished. It would also diverge to infinity. But as long as we have one of the sections in our broken up interval diver diverge into infinity, we've already got this infinite area here, and so it diverges. So sometimes when we have issues to do with infinity, it's going to diverge. Sometimes it's going to converge. We don't know until we do our computation. So I'm going to leave you with two final thoughts, which is to not be naive and do some of the things that we've done before unthinkingly. The first is that if we have a limit from A up to, not B, up to infinity, we can't just plug in infinity. Infinity is not a number that we can just evaluate at. We might be tempted to not even think about this. We might think, well, there's no infinities that I can see in sight, but there might be a discontinuity. And all of the tools that we're using in this course sort of rely on the fundamental theorem of calculus that does not apply when we have this discontinuities. So if I've got a discontinuity such as a division by zero issue, then I've got to break it up into different parts and I've got to take a limiting process to evaluate around these discontinuities. They might diverge or it might converge, but we have to do further analysis of that.